Hey everybody, welcome to another Goodie Beater comparison video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we are going to compare the BlackBerry Q5, which just came out, versus the BlackBerry Q10. Both of these phones look similar, but they both have different hardware and bring different things to the table. Let's talk a little bit about the hardware. The display on the BlackBerry Q10 is 3.1 inches, but it's super AMOLED. Whereas the Q5 is 3.1 inches, but it's only an LCD screen. This doesn't really affect the resolution. It's 720 by 720 on both of the units. Uh, the Q10 has a bit faster of a processor. You have a dual core 1.5 gigahertz versus the dual core 1.2 gigahertz on the Q5. They both have two gigs of RAM. Although the Q10 has 16 gigs of storage, but the Q5 only has 8 gigs. But you can expand both of their memories up to 32 gigs via the SD card. And the Q10 actually has a bit better of a camera. You have 8 megapixels on the back whereas you only have five megapixels on the Q5, but they both have two megapixel front-facing camera. Peter, I noticed that it looks different. This looks plastic. This looks a little bit more refined. What are the differences between the build quality between the two? This is basically where you get such a high price tag um, from anywhere between $699 and $800 on the Q10. The frame and the sides here are actually all made out of stainless steel all around this device. The front, of course, is glass for the glass screen, and the back is a glass woven battery cover and top of the back here as well. You can see that that comes off like so. And we're going to put that back. So you have a lot higher quality materials on the Q10 than you do on the Q5. The Q5 is plastic. It's plastic on the front, plastic on the back, plastic on the sides. The front is glass, but everything else is plastic. So you are getting um, pretty much the same experience for about half the price. They both have um, micro USB ports, but you do have a micro HDMI port as well on the Q10, so that's an, uh, that's an added bonus as well. You have the up, volume up and down, center button. You have the microphone, a better view here. And you have the standby button, 3.5 mil headphone jack, and the speakers on the bottom. Same with the Q5 speakers on the bottom, SIM card, SD card go on the side, 3.5 mil, headfo uh, mil headphone jack up top with a microphone, standby button, camera, micro USB port, but uh, no HDMI, no fancy glass, no stainless steel, just simple yeah, plastic Yeah, I noticed fills. like if we look at here, the volume buttons on, you can check out the volume buttons, like right. steel, plastic yeah all the materials are downgraded to give you the same great blackberry experience but none of the costs that involves you getting a z10 or a q10 models. this is the main home screen you can see here all of the, the apps that come preloaded on it this is the multitask screen so any type of apps that you have open will appear here and then you scroll to the side calls scroll again you get to the hub so you can check out your email addresses and things like that and hub management is kind of cool because you can have uh, your work emails separated from your private emails uh, through BlackBerry Balance. So instead of having two phones, one for your work, one for your home, you can actually use BlackBerry Balance to um, keep your work and private, you know, your personal life separate through the same phone. And, and that's only through BlackBerry. Um, Typing, of course, is done through the full QWERTY screen, uh, full QWERTY keyboard. You're not going to really do a lot of typing actually on the screen. For people that are not too, the, there's a lot of people that are very resistant to touch screen phones. And this is really why with BlackBerry's new OS that they really tried to maintain the bold and the curve aspect. You know, the Bold is a higher price model, the Curve's a lower price model. This is more or less the equivalent, even though they call it the Q10, Q5. You can think of this as the Bold and think of this as the Curve for people that are more familiar with the older versions of BlackBerry. Now, BlackBerry has an official app market, but I wouldn't really call it the best in the world. 
Uh, there is a lot of apps that really aren't the greatest, but there are a number of apps here. You won't find Angry Birds to total library of apps per se, but you will find McAfee and iTunes and, and or sorry, McAfee and um, <clears throat> baseball apps and most of your popular apps, but you will not find Instagram. You're not going to find Vine. You're not going to find um, a lot of the more popular apps that people really want these days, but you can find things like Tank Hero, uh, but you could also rent movies and buy music as well. Just click here really quick. So you can check that out there. One of the big advantages with BlackBerry 10 is the emulator. And right now they have an Android 2.3 emulator, so most apps that were written for that version of Android will work. BlackBerry soon with a 10.2 update will actually increase the Android emulator to Jelly Bean. But what's an emulator? Well, it basically allows the BlackBerry system to run side-loaded Android apps. And we have videos on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash goodyreader that actually walk you through the entire setup. Well, what exactly can you do with the Android emulator? Well, first of all, you could watch movies on Netflix. I can't let you do that. It would be so much work. This dress is fine. Twilight Sparkle. I insist on making you a new dress. But not another word. I won't do no for an actor. Well... Despite the differences in LCD and LED, that it's not too much of a difference on such a small screen, so the viewing experience should be pretty much the same, as well as the audio. It's pretty much running the same onboard sound, so the audio coming out of the bottom speaker, which isn't muffled by the back, thank goodness, uh, is actually quite clear. So um, I think overall, it, it, it's not the most ideal of multimedia devices in terms of video and audio, but if you had to watch something, it's not going to be the worst experience. Hey, I mean, I'm glad that BlackBerry, you know, you can sideload it on Netflix. I yeah. Mean, you know, there's a lot of great, you know, hundreds hundreds of videos, things for the kids. I mean, there's something for everybody. Yeah. And, um, I know people have been begging for Netflix for like forever on BlackBerry exactly. devices. And so you may not have the largest screen or, you know, being able to watch things in landscape mode like you would on a Z10. But hey, you could watch, you could watch Netflix videos. Yeah. And this is really to show you how square the screen is because you can see all this black space because the screen is essentially one by one. So, um, I mean, it's pretty much there is no difference between landscape and portrait. So don't worry too much that it doesn't flip. It'll pretty much be the exact same thing if you were to flip it 90 degrees. Okay, you could also, being Goody Reader, obviously we want to put a little bit more emphasis on the reading experience with these two. Uh, you can use, uh, c we have Comixology yep. here. What are we looking at? This is Street Fighter comic. So using the Comixology app, you can buy comics, but also download comics that you may have purchased on other devices. So uh, these comics are courtesy of, I believe, my iPad that I originally used to purchase comics. And then I logged into the same account on both of these phones to show you the same comic on both of them. You know, the colors actually look a bit different. It's interesting. Yeah, you are right. This is more of a deeper green. And that's like a little bit more lighter. Yeah, we'll let you guys compare those two side by side, but this is, remember, the Q5, and then this is the Q10 on the right. So, um, yeah, there's definitely different quality when you go from uh, LED to LCD. So, uh, that's what you're faced with with these two screen technologies. There's not much you can do in terms of uh, changing much on this uh, Android emulated version. You're pretty much stuck in... Uh, what you have here. Yeah, you can do a lot of the same changes here. Letterboxing, controlling the ability to go into their guided view technology, but you could also browse pages too. And a lot of people are saying, uh, we've noticed with previous reviews, why would you ever read comics on this device? Why would you ever Well, hey, I mean, this, this looks good. That's exactly what I'm saying. It's you know, if you had this device, why be restricted by not ever reading comics when you can? So this is to show you guys that although the screen is small and it's square, you can indeed read comics and you shouldn't feel like you're not able to just because you don't have an Android device. Yeah, I mean, with, with BlackBerry, people are doing 
things these days that go beyond just text messaging and email, but you're you're using Flipboard, you're using Pulse, uh, you're using the Amazon Kindle exactly. app to read eBooks, and it's important to note that. Amazon Kindle has made the wrap available officially in BlackBerry World, but it's only available for the Z10 or Z10. They don't actually make it available if you have the Q10 or Q5 to download it. So we were forced to sideload the app. So it's the Android emulated version, but it has all the features. Because you're using the exact same app, you're going to get the exact same features. Although if you notice, once again, the colors are a little bit different. There's a lot more blues in this particular uh, the Q10 screen than there are on the uh, the Q5s. Um, you get all the same changes like uh, you can do long presses, you can make highlights, you can make notes. Fairly responsive. Yeah, pretty quick. You can make bookmarks in the corner. So the stock Kindle experience, no matter which device you use Kindle on, it's going to be Kindle. So um, once again, yes, small screen, but readable because you can always change the text if you want to uh, whatever size you feel like. You can even make it small if your eyesight's rather good and you can get a lot of the text on the screen actually. Yeah, you notice we're doing a lot of swiping and gesturing. When you're within apps you can, minute, you can you know, go into multitask mode by just swiping up. In a lot of cases you can just swipe down too to Reveal see. Reveal like, the bar at the bottom. Yeah. Um, you'll see this on Android emulated apps where if it's like if you clip on this bar then you'll actually see like a number of like settings appear here. You so, can even pin the bar by pressing pin and the bar will never go away too. You can do that. Yeah, so if you've noticed why we're doing that, well it's mainly because that's the way that Blackberry is interacting with things where it's like you're swiping from the bezel on the screen or swiping up. Right. So Press Reader is a newspaper viewing app, but we have found that the um, experience is rather laggy. You can't actually swipe as fast as you want. You got to let it load because it, it's it's an emulated uh, version. So you can see that Mike swiped three or four times, and it's still trying to figure out what he's doing. So you gotta kind of let it go on its own pace which is not the best experience because yeah it's, it's dual actually core speakers two gigs of ram on both of it uh i don't know why it's gross like this but it is but hey i mean this is the official app that's available in blackberry world yeah we didn't side buying load these it. phones and wanting to buy newspapers i would probably skip this app i've actually clicked on that already on the q10 and it's not uh it's not doing it so that's pretty much what we're faced with with this particular app. Now that we're in uh, article mode here, we'll show you that it is rather smooth on the Q5 once you dive in. But uh, you really got to let almost the entire newspaper load before you get any sort of fluid motion with anything you do. Yeah. Once it loads, you see that it, it does become a little bit smoother, but it looks like the Q10 is playing catch-up. But overall, the app for reading newspaper, and why we show this is because we usually show it, because it's a good mix of images and text. It's not the most uh, pleasurable experience for reading. Yeah. Okay, so in the end, these two uh, phones represent what BlackBerry is trying to do to redeem themselves. They have a new operating system, they have an Android emulator to run Android apps, they've really really gone to town with a BBM. They have added a lot of kind of cool abilities uh, for you know, being able to do video, being able to do text. Multi-person chat, broadcast message, start chat, all those kind yeah. of um, options you'd expect to see here plus a little bit more so we're gonna show what it's like to video talk and to do a lot of the new BBM feature so stay tuned to our YouTube channel for that we'll let you guys kind of sound off on which device that you like better and the reasons why we mainly just wanted to give you an honest tutorial on how these uh, how these two phones stack up to each other on a hardware level and also how do they handle 
and emulated Android apps. As you can see, some apps worked better than others. Netflix worked really well. Yep, Comics flawlessly. worked well. Kindle worked well. Some of the other apps, not so well. But that's to be expected. With BlackBerry, you need to have a lot of patience these days. There's a lot of trial and error. But there are a lot of apps available in BlackBerry world. But if you want apps that are like Instagram, Vine, Netflix, um, and a ton of others, you want to check out third-party app markets like our own at apps.goodyreader.com. And if you want to learn how to sideload your own apps into the Q5, stay tuned to an upcoming video in our YouTube channel. So for a comparison of the Q5 and Q10, for goodyreader.com, my name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care.